Welcome to my video, um, finding associations between summation sequences and series. The focus of a good part of this video will be geometric series and geometric uh, arithmetic series. And of course the sums of these will be coming from geometric sequences and arithmetic sequences. Let's start off with arithmetic, uh, arithmetic sequences. And um, we can see the nth term in a sequence, arithmetic sequence, is a plus d times n minus 1, a being the first term, or t1, d being the common difference, and n being just the number of the term. The, it's what goes in the subscript of t. So you can have t1, t2, t3, and so on. Now, I have, uh, supposing that tn is 3 plus 2n. I'm asking you to suspend your disbelief. Uh, if we expand 5 plus 2 times n minus 1, we'll get the same formula. And so this is indeed an arithmetic sequence. You can see that there's a regular difference of 2. Uh, it's just that it was simplified from 5 times 2 times n minus 1, or 5 plus 2 times n minus 1. And uh, here we uh, go, just adding up these terms. Now if we add them up, up to infinity, uh, chances are with an arithmetic sequence, most of them, we're going to get infinity. But what about if the upper limit is finite, uh, any finite number? Well, we'll use the same formula again, 3 plus 2n. We'll go up to 10, from 1 to 10. And we can say, well, the n equals 1 to 10 of 3, and the sum of n equals 1 to 10 of 2n. We can take the 2 out. And notice we actually find that we have to reckon with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 10. There's a simplification formula where you can add the first and the last terms and multiply by half of the number of terms and you get 55 from that. Of course you can check this by simply adding the 10 numbers together. Once we do all the math we get 140. Here's another way of doing it. Um, well, you can actually use that same shortcut formula. There's 10 terms divided by 2, that's 10 over 2, plus the sum of the first and last term, that's 5 plus 23. That makes 5 times 28. We still get 140. This, is, this generalizes <laughs> into um, this general formula, x over 2, if x is the upper limit of the summation, then we get x divided by 2 times in the quantity, the value of the first term plus the value of the last term, a1 plus ax. Uh, so that's the shortcut formula, and uh, we're going to notice that there's going to be plenty of shortcut formulas here. Now I'm going to just show you explicitly that these things are that this sum that we had before does amount to 5 times 28 if we had the first and last terms the second first plus the, plus the second last term the third the third term plus the third last term and so on and we still get 140 from that or 5 times 28 So this leads us to the general formula for adding any sequential integers from 1 to some k value. This becomes k over 2 multiplied by k plus 1. Now that 1 can be replaced by any value of whatever the first term is. So the 1 just happens to be the first term. And uh, I'm just going to put these in squares. There's a couple of more advanced formulas down there, but I used n instead of k, but they should have been k. The numbers that I'm talking about here, adding from 1 up to some finite number k, are known as the triangular numbers. 1 is a triangular number, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. These are all triangular numbers. What do they have to do with? Well, they have to do with arrangements of objects in a triangle, regularly spaced. So just to illustrate, I have here 1. Well, 1 fits in a triangle quite nicely. What would be another number? Well, 2 doesn't go so well, but 3 does, right? 3, can be three objects can be arranged in a triangle. So can 6. 
and if we add a fourth row with four dots, we have 10. And notice we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and that makes 10. So that's the next one. And then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 make another triangle where we have 15 dots. And to that same triangle, if we add a 6 row on the bottom with 6 dots, that's 15 plus 6, which is 21. Or 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, which makes 21. These are all our triangular numbers. And you'll find that uh, they, come, they come up quite a bit when you study Pascal's triangle, or you may have already have by this point, that we're adding sequential numbers um, from starting from one to some upper number. Okay, so there's triangular numbers. Are there any other sequences named after other polygons? This is getting a little off topic, but it's it's kind of an amusing um, thing to think about. Well, square numbers. Square numbers. Oh yes, square numbers. N squared. Well, we know about those. Okay, that's when you arrange n squared objects in a square of n by n objects. Okay, so you get 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, and so on. Now it's kind of obvious. But is there a shortcut formula? Well, um, after looking around a little bit, I was able to find a shortcut formula. It does exist. And, um, and I'm about to show it to you. Th this is the summation of all the perfect squares up to k squared, or some upper limit, whatever limit you like. And this works out to 2k cubed plus 3k squared plus k all divided by 6. And that's for any n greater than or equal to 1. Well, yes, there are other polygon type numbers, pentagonal numbers, named after the five-sided pentagon. And so you have one which fits in a pentagon, you have five objects which can be arranged obviously in a pentagon, and if we keep adding one more dot to each side, you always get a pentagon, and then inside that you can draw the pentagon that you had in the last part of the sequence. So you have five, and then that little five happening inside the pentagon which has a total of 12 objects or 12 dots. This one has, the next one has the same thing, we added one more dot to the outside, so that's the four dots per side, and then drew another one inside that, and drew another one inside that for a total of 22 dots, or 22 objects. And uh, it has a shortcut formula of its own. And so do hexagonal numbers. We keep adding one dot, just like we did with pentagonal numbers, to each side. And inside that, we drew the same object as in the last, uh, the last object we drew. It would be the same object, meaning one dot in between the other with the hexagon we began with. So, And notice we get 1, 6, 15, and 28. And of course there's more. It keeps going. The shortcut formula for this one, as n goes from 1 to k of 2n squared minus n, which is really the pattern of the series, uh, of the sequence that is, makes up 4k cubed plus 3k squared minus k all divided by 6. Notice we have minus k this time, all divided by 6. And yes, that formula does work out. Now, this is a little off the beaten path. Um, this is uh, not so much an arithmetic or geometric series, but more of what we would call a recursive sequence. Uh, the Fibonacci numbers, the Fibonacci sequence, very, very um, famous sequence. That's where F1 and F2 are both one, and that's where we start from. One plus one make two, 
and then we add the, the last two numbers, 1 plus 2 makes the next number 3, One, 2 plus 3 makes 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and basically we're always adding the previous two results to make the next result. Now what about the sum of the Fibonacci terms, F1 plus F2 plus F3, what would we get? It turns out that, that that's a kind of pattern too. We always get the um, Fibonacci number that occurs two, two numbers later, subtract 1. F sub K plus 2 minus 1. There's also another kind of off-topic strange sequence. What about 1 over n squared going from 1 to infinity? This actually works out to be a finite number. It doesn't go to infinity. It ends up being pi squared divided by 6, strangely enough, and that was discovered by Leonard Euler. So what about the geometric series or the geometric sequence. That's a times r to the power of n minus 1. a remembers your first term. r now is your common ratio and n is whatever the term number is. So let's say that we just use something innocent 2 to the n or sorry 2 to the n minus 1. So that's t1 and we plug that in, that's 2 to the 0, which is 1. t2, that's 2 to the 2 minus 1, which becomes 2. 2 to the 3 minus 1 for t3 becomes 2 squared, or 4. You get the idea. You just keep plugging things into n to get the next term. Now, if we wanted to add up all the terms in a geometric series, you end up with a times the quantity 1 minus r to the x divided by 1 minus r. You can also take a outside the, outside the summation as well. Let's see if this works for 2 to the n minus 1 going from 1 to 10. It turns out that you can actually find this out yourself. You're going to get 1,023, positive number, even though in the calculation you have to work with negative numbers, which cancel anyway. What about some other patterns? So let's say that n is negative and we're going in the negative direction uh, between negative 1 and negative infinity uh, of a times r to the n. Uh, it turns out that we can take away the minus signs uh, in the summation and make it a times r to the negative n or a divided by r to the n. These are all the same kind of summation. And it turns out, strangely enough, you get a divided by r minus 1. For the sum of a geometric series, um, if we're doing this uh, n going from 0 to infinity of r to the n, um, then you end up with uh, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r fourth, all the way to some high number, which we can say r to the n maybe. If we, if we now multiply both sides by r, we get r times sn, which is the sum the summation for all of the terms. And that means that all of those terms in the first uh, place get all multiplied by r. So you get r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth, all the way to rn, r to the n. And notice after doing all this, you can factor out s uh, sub n, and you end up with s sub n times 1 minus r quantity. And on the other side of the uh, equation, you get 1 plus r to the n minus 1. Divide both sides by 1 minus r, and you get the familiar formula for the summation of terms in a geometric series. Now, here are some special cases that also remind us of those formulas that end up in a similar way when you do an expansion. Uh, if I do a divided by the square root of r, I get a divided by square root of r minus 1. If I do the summation of r to the power n, I get r over 1 minus r. Remember, a is just 1. If I do the summation starting from 0 instead of 1, I get 1 over 1 minus r, so it's a subtle difference. And uh, notice that if, r, if n is positive, I get a divided by 1 minus r, whereas if you remember when a was negative, it's a divided by r minus 1, or if you like, negative a over 1 minus r.